Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 22 May 2013. Tonight I wanted to talk about a new technological development and maybe some history of <clears throat> of technology and folding knives. Uh, well, what, what did folding knives used to look like way back in the dark ages? This isn't a very old knife, but it's a representation of what folding knives looked like for, I don't know, a hundred years or so. Uh, it's a slip joint, Victorinox Swiss Army Cadet. You've got uh, a frame of, in this case, Alox <clears throat> aluminum alloy with a brass pin. Uh, maybe not brass in this case, maybe a nickel silver pin that goes through a hole in a blade tang. That blade rotates around that pin. Tension supplied by a back spring to hold it open and hold it closed. <clears throat> you actually insert a fingernail into a nick and you pull it out and it snaps open. You know, it needs a little oil every now and then to work smoothly. No particular attention paid to uh, that pivot, how smoothly or how quickly it moves the blade. We didn't think about that stuff back then. <clears throat> Sometime along the line, we got into knives like this, or at least the, the forerunner of a knife like this. We started putting mechanisms on them, like thumb studs in this case, so we could open them with one hand. We would push on the thumb stud and open the blade. As we started doing that, we started thinking about how to be able to do that quickly, like that and smoothly, smoothly. Like that. And while we were trying to make it quick and smooth and easy to manipulate, we had to try to maintain rigidity and torsional strength. So things started to be developed to help us in that end. <clears throat> Way back in the 90s, we started to see knives with Teflon washers to make them glide open and closed more smoothly. And then we started to see these little guys. Phosphor bronze washers. <clears throat> Interesting development in the knife world. Borrowed technology. And I'm going to talk about where and why these are borrowed from, or at least technology similar to them, and why it made sense for knives. <clears throat> there used to be a lot of mechanical devices in the world that used similar bearings, and yes, these washers are indeed bearings. The one that leaps immediately into mind is the internal combustion engine. Now they're shaped a little differently, but where your connecting rods connect to your crankshaft, there are flat but curved uh, half circle or half, di half circumference bearings, two of them, each time the connecting rod connects to the crankshaft, that are, uh, they stay in one place fastened securely to the inside of the race and the connecting rod and the crankshaft goes through the middle and spins <clears throat> on that bearing. Now, that bearing has to accomplish two things. It, it doesn't, it's not really concerned with super free spinning. It just has to be consistently free, fairly free, and that bearing has to be able to withstand tremendous loads, crushing loads, that want to squeeze it without deforming too much 
and not sacrificing the important parts on either side of it. And when something does wear out in that union, in that, in that joint, that convergence of pieces of metal, this bearing should be the thing that is sacrificed. It used to be in the old days, bronze bearings were used inside engines. They've got better alloys now with little particles of bronze in them. They would wear out. <clears throat> they would spin new bearings in your car. Crankshaft intact, connecting rods intact. This translated very well to the folding knife. Better than Teflon because it was more rigid side to side. It's still self-lubricating like Teflon. Of course, it works better if you throw a little oil on it. But what does it need to do? Well, it needs to allow the blade to open with adequate smoothness and speed. But the opening and closing isn't the only responsibility of that washer or bearing. It also has to be able to withstand torsional stress. When, I'm, when the knife is used as a tool, that bearing, that washer, is part of the package. It needs to help that blade remain rigid, <clears throat> even when opening. This knife has a thumb stud. This uh, ZT0550, first impressions in the can, full review to come, still testing. Let's look at what happens when I use that thumb stud. I'm pushing, not only am I pushing this way, but in order to gain purchase, I'm pushing this way, putting torsional stress on the blade every time I open it. <clears throat> the bearing on this side of the blade is under a lot of stress. It has to be, it has to hold up and it has to distribute that load. This knife has two of these washers slash bearings, one on either side of the blade. Let's see how it does. Now remember, it's being pressed on by a very firm lock bar. Is it keeping the uh, blade in the right position? Looks like the washers are doing a pretty good job, at least when the blade's standing still. Does it, uh, does it let the blade open freely and smoothly? I, I would say it does. How about closing? Let's see. With very little effort, even with the lock bar pressing, that knife moves pretty well. What if I get the lock bar out of the way? Yeah. <clears throat> Is it adequately fast? I don't know. We'll use no wrist action and a little bit of thumb. Not bad. Well, we couldn't leave well enough alone in the knife world, could we? You see, there's this whole segment of the knife buying public <laughs> who sits on their couch, sits on they sit on their couches watching YouTube videos or uh, South Park, or The Family Guy, and they flip their knives. Flip, flip. I, I do that too. I sit on my couch and flip my knives while I'm watching uh, Fox News. Or the like. <clears throat> so, with very little regard for doing anything with a knife except opening and closing it, we had to come up with something faster faster than the good old-fashioned phosphor bronze washer slash bearing. Somebody got the bright idea of borrowing some other existing technology <clears throat> and we decided to put rings of ball bearings uh, around either side of a knife pivot. Well, ball bearings are great. They, uh, they are used extensively in industry and automotive applications. They uh, allow one piece of metal to turn freely inside another piece of metal. But they require some things in order to work right. Because the area of contact in a ball bearing is so small, it's a single point for each ball, that series of ball bearings have to be restrained 
in an outer race which is hardened and micro-finished, and an inner race which is hardened and micro-finished, so that as those two things turn one inside the other, there is no wear, there is no friction, and they do like lubricant, by the way. They need lubricant and needs to be held in there uh, to avoid wear. Now, the ball bearings themselves, <clears throat> if you think about it, where'd my little washer go? If this guy is subjected to torsional loads or crushing loads, it has the entire surface area, all that bronze you can see, distributing that load. A ball has one point on each side distributing that load. If you have seven bearings in a ring, you have seven points on each side. Fourteen tiny points in space. Where's that load going to go? Well, it's going to be transferred into whatever material is on either side of that ball. And <clears throat> commonly in knives, one channel, this is a ZT0550. If you look at the 560, 560, and 561, those have bearing pivots. One of the reasons I didn't buy one of those. Hmm. So, <clears throat> here's how they do it. One side of the knife, the titanium frame side, has a race, a channel cut in it around the pivot. Seven ball bearings lie in that channel. And the other point of contact besides the titanium channel is the blade tang of the knife. On the other side, the channel is cut into the blade tang. Not micro-finished these channels, just milled. And then the other side of the balls rests against the stainless steel liner. Now, remember, in order for ball bearings to work correctly, they need to be housed in hardened, micro-finished races. Ball bearings have a Rockwell hardness of about 66 or 67. If you look at a wheel bearing from a car, the inner and outer race probably have a 63 to 64 Rockwell hardness. They're all hard and smooth, and with the aid of lubricant, wear is minimized. They also have to be sealed to keep the lubricant in and the debris out because there's lots of space in between those little balls. As you can see, not much space between the steel, the titanium, and the phosphor bronze. In fact, there's no space. Debris can't get between there unless it's really tiny debris. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, what happens to a car wheel bearing when the seal fails, the lubricant leaks out, and the debris gets in? Hmm. Well, anybody who owns a front-wheel drive or four-wheel drive car knows the answer to that. It's a $500 wheel bearing job, and it happens pretty frequently. Those are ball bearings on modern cars. So, how does it work in a knife? Well, let's see. You have a... Let's look at the titanium side, because it's the weakest. You have... A Rockwell 66 or 67 ball bearing pressing down with great force into a channel made of titanium, which is fairly soft. Don't know what it is on the Rockwell scale, but probably somewhere in the low to mid 40s. And it's turning, wearing. I've even seen a ZT560 video disassembled on YouTube uh, where there is a channel dug by the ball bearings with metal shavings uh, from the titanium wearing away. Guys, here's here's the point. Yes, they the the ball bearing systems, be it IKBS or KVT in the Kershaw products, while they may make a knife that looks really impressive, you know, closing or opening on YouTube. Uh, if you're going to use the knife as a knife, it's really a pretty bad idea. Uh, it just is. If the knife is going to be used a lot or if it's going to be used hard, what's going to go away isn't the bearing. What's going to go away is the titanium frame of your knife or the stainless steel liner on the other side. And uh, you're going to end up with a loose or gritty or notchy knife. Uh, if you're a couch flipper, you'll love it. If you're a knife user, you won't. 
That's all I got, guys. Grace and peace. Good night.